So here we have a specialized S-Works Stump Jumper, a 2011 model, although it, on the uh, manufacturing date it says uh, manufactured in 2010. This one was sent in by a gentleman called Dean. I don't know his last name, he just called himself Dean on the email. I'm just looking at it here. He says, hi there, I've crashed a 2011 S-Works Stump Jumper FSR frame, link here. Something is bent, maybe the chain stays, as they're the only metal bit on it. It's not rideable. Before I throw it out, would you like it for cutting up? If so, I can send it to you. So naturally I said, yeah, send it in, because I'm always uh, happy to receive uh, parts for, uh, for review. So um, yeah, thank you very much, Dean, for sending this in. A um, little, bit, little bit about this frame. It's uh, made uh, from their... Um, their FACT 10M material, whatever that means. Um, on the road, they have 11R at, at the same time. At, you know, similar sort of age, they had the 11R, whatever that means. Um, whether they use different fibres or whatever, it's all the marketing stuff that they do. Um, who knows? It's, um, it's on the, the surface finish on it is primarily clear over over the carbon with the red highlights and, and some graphics. Um, you can see a few areas of where it's been sanded through, but overall it's not too bad. And then they sort of black out where the joins are down near the bottom bracket. So um, let's, uh, let's have a bit more of a look at it. So we cut it in half um, as we normally do, uh, straight down the middle. And uh, this is what it looks like cut in half so the um, you know, quite a few things uh, of note and um, I mean overall it's pretty clean but there's a couple of things we'll uh, we'll go into so let's have a deeper look um, from here so let's go to the bottom bracket area like we normally do first up and um, it looks like it's been molded with an early uh, generation of the like semi-rigid bladder like the EPS sort of type molding so you can see it's not molded like a typical bag it's um, it's sort of more uniform and smoother however there still is quite a um, a line through here that you can see where there's sort of a, a, a wrinkle or it's more, more sort of like some resin pooling or compaction variation so whether the part was in um, a number of pieces in that area to get around the corner. I'm, I'm not sure. But what that reduction in compaction uh, has led to is a void there. So, you know, it's quite clear that that void then runs all the way around um, through that uh, reduced compaction area. So I haven't scanned this as so I've just basically just cut it up and and got straight to it so without uh, without any scanning but um, you know that's sort of the first thing that's obvious there the um, the pivot the main pivot through here there's a, a metal insert uh, aluminium and that's put in really well so it's uh, it's fully encapsulated you know there's no way that it can um, it can come out um, or you know it's fully fully surrounded by by material and then all it's just with the carbon and then also with the uh some foam or sort of syntactic type uh filler it's this white material here just just to create the contour for the rest of the frame now you might also be able to see a little bit of corrosion sort of through here and we'll have a closer look at that on the on the next slide So here you can see, uh, you get a good look at that corrosion and um, it looks like there's sort of been some dirt build up in, in that region as well. Now the thing to be mindful of with mountain biking is depending on the soil um, that you're riding through and if it, you know, the mud and etc, it can, it, it can be acidic or, or alkaline and both of those conditions can lead to corrosion of the aluminium. So if you if you're getting um, a build-up of 
of of muddy water or or something like that in those areas, it can definitely result in um, in accelerated corrosion of those aluminium type components. Here's another look at it, and uh, you know you can see there's some some material sort of lifting through here. So whether that's some uh, some adhesive, it's hard to tell. So sort of everything sort of degraded through that area a little bit and uh, it's hard to identify exactly what that is. They did um, use some sort of sh uh, some material around the bottom brackets I've seen on some of the similar age sort of frames at the time to assist with bonding the bottom brackets in and uh, with the adhesive flow etc. So uh, you know it might be remnants of that and then some resin but the, the white material that you see there is aluminium oxide so that's that's corrosion and that's what's lifting um, there is also sort of right you know through here evidence of that as well so you know it's possible that the the bond is starting to be compromised there as well you get a better look at that through here so um, you know right around there there's sort of the build up and yeah, that's sort of not looking that great in, in terms of the corrosion, you know, you're getting it at, the, at that interface. The other thing that you'll notice is uh, through here, like you'll see some delamination lines. Now, those, uh, those areas of material, that delaminated uh, when I cut the material. However, it's unusual that... Uh, you get a delamination on the surface pliers like that you know when cutting it normally doesn't happen so it hasn't happened through other areas of the bike so it is plausible that there was some resin degradation in those areas uh, due to moisture ingression and build up and you know water, if water is just sitting in that spot for some time you, they can um, degrade the epoxy a little bit so maybe maybe there's some of that going on as well So moving up to the the bottom bracket to the down tube junction and uh, there's a bonded joint there and you can see you know there's there's plenty of adhesive in that section there there is a very small void here and also here and um, I mean that's sort of right at the um, right at the at the outer root so so basically the, the step of uh of, of the lug you can you can see you can see the lug sort of finishes here and the step goes to there so that's the sort of the overlap region and it's right on that corner now there is a ply placed over the um the top i mean you can you can see it clearly on this edge that there's extra material placed over that joint so that little void it's um it, it's not going to do much um, the it would be better to have to have the void on this side as opposed to on yeah, over this edge of it as opposed to this edge of it um, but overall I'm not too concerned about that um, the down tube appears to be molded pretty well like you know it's, it's a straight bag in the in this section and um, a few little creases in the bag but that's uh, that's not significant the other thing you can see a little bit of corrosion around the aluminium insert here as well so there is a fiberglass barrier ply which you can make out sort of going there up to up to here in um, in that region where the insert is but there's but the actual insert itself it's got a little bit of corrosion on it and uh, yeah, again from that moisture ingression and uh, the moisture pooling in that area further up the uh, the down tube I keep on saying that up the down tube again a little bit of corrosion on this insert uh, um, again fiberglass in that area so that's good um, and uh, you know, overall that's uh, that's pretty clean it's uh, you know there's nothing really to report there it uh, so I haven't scanned it as such but um, visually it all looks that looks good 
and then we've got the head tube and down tube junction and again so where the transition to this sort of um, semi-rigid bladder to the bag you've got this line and uh, and then further up here you can see you can see a void and we'll have a closer look at that in a sec but also a nice big wrinkle here um, which is a bit of a concern there is also some uh, a yeah, nice big air um, big void in this region here we'll have a bit more of a closer look at that but the um, the head tube junction is is well reinforced you've got a lot of material so it's in th that region here and and the, the laminate builds up in thickness nicely and um, yeah there's some fabric here at the lower end as well as uh, the, uni the unidirectional and again at the the top tube junction you can see that uh, the transition again where there is a bit of a, a bit of a problem but let's have a closer look at some of this stuff the, the lower the lower race that's that's put in there really well so there's no issues with that at all there's um, lots of material through this through this region you know the laminate um, there's plenty of laminate through there the inserts are well designed lots of bond area there's good adhesive um, hopefully there's some sort of barrier between the aluminium and the uh, and the carbon it it's it's hard to tell uh, you know from, from that the um, the adhesive this sort of whiter white material there that extra um, there, there could be that could be the indication of they put sufficient adhesive in there to act as the barrier but um, I, I'm not sure right sort of along this edge if there's any glass or anything to isolate but having said that there's been there's no signs of any corrosion in that e interface either so that all looks good so the upper bearing is pretty similar there are a couple of things um, of concern here and um, you can see there's some indications here of um, looks like some resin pooling it could there could be some voids under there but basically some variations in the compaction in in there like I'd need to scan to identify if it's a void or if it's resin but you know it's 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 clear from that this uh, sort of semi-rigid bladder um, process it must have been very early days of that uh, that system because it, it still sort of needs refining compared to what we see nowadays with that sort of system um, so there is some variations with that but the other thing of concern is um, you've got this little void here and um, but you've also got this this laminate wrinkle here which is sort of encased by foam and and then you've got um, all this sort of a, a, a syntactic material and then you you've got plenty of wall thickness of carbon so I'm not concerned about that from a structural point of view of holding together but with that wrinkle you could get a, a surface crack developing in that and you often see that sort of thing happening like paint cracks and um, you know, the whole thing with a paint crack is the paint just doesn't crack on its own right so that the paint does not crack on its own something underneath the surface needs to move for it to crank to crack and a wrinkle is what typically leads to these cracks and so you know, as you can see here there's not that much of a structural concern because there's plenty of material underneath sort of backing that up but on the surface you could get um, you could definitely get a paint crack you know, eventuating from that so um, and then you know people would freak out because they see a, a, uh, a crack on their bike and you know there shouldn't be cracks on the bike so um, yeah so a bit of a bit of a concern with that um, but the rest of it mm, yeah not too bad yeah and then we'll look at this area here which um, there's definitely some variations in the compaction here and, and a close look right at this surface here there's uh there's some void and uh 
you know, it's real indication of no compaction because they're, they're basically like an air bubble on the surface resin. So again, so there are some variations in in this sort of semi-rigid bladder process, and as I said, it's, it's early days of that uh, of that process. So yeah, you know, they've obviously refined it. The other thing you'll note is along here at that transition, there's a step, but it um, just some dirty, dirty water or something is sort of collected in that in that spot. So um, you've got right along that line where uh, yeah, dirty water is pooled up, and yeah, you know, that could could lead to some sort of more degradation of the of of the uh, epoxy matrix over time. So yeah, not ideal, and it's and you know, a hard edge like that is. It's never, never good having a hard edge like that. And then, apart from these sort of voids, which we, um, which we touched on before, the other thing which is note, you just notice the wall thickness through here. It gets thinner, and then it gets thicker again. And um, so, so, there are some variations in the in the compactions uh, through this method. So, um, it has been refined a lot in recent times. So. You know, it's, it's definitely improved. The um, but there is a lot of material in that area, and it's sort of it's unlikely that you're going to have a um, a failure, a structural failure through that area. And again, through that transition across here from the semi-rigid to the flexible bag. A little, little bit ugly, sort of through here where you've got the wrinkles and you sort of got excess resin, and again you've got that step that you can see here. So a yeah, little bit of variation in the compaction. So um, you know, because if the compaction was uniform, you wouldn't have a thickness, an abrupt thickness change like that. So, um, but you know, through the rest of it. It, it looks quite uniform. It's just at the transition where there seems to be a little bit of a um, little bit of an issue. And then across further down the uh, the top tube, all that looks pretty good. Um, you know, there's nothing of of note there. You can you can see where the the shock mount goes. The laminate is is there's a, a doubler basically reinforcement and to increase the thickness there. And uh, and also, sort of through this section here, that's increased in thickness as it transitions to to that uh, that profile. And then a closer look through the uh, the junction there with the the C tube, uh, top tube C tube, and uh, yeah, you've got some nice sort of thickness through here and then like a little bit of a bulkhead where they're using a different bag um, and you're getting some variations in the compaction through here too so you know that's that's not ideal having that step like that um, we have seen on um, on these sorts of things crack indications appear uh, you know in sort of in these in these regions I mean it's quite a high stress area but when you have a wrinkle like that, as I spoke about before, that's when you're likely to have these sort of paint crack indications. Um, you also got a, some some bag bag wrinkles here, but that's sort of not uh, not really of a concern. So here we get a good overview of that triangulated top tube and C tube junction. So lots of strength and stiffness through that design. So you know, you're not going to have any problems with that. The, um, there is a, a little bit of a void that you can see here, um, sort of quite a long elongated void. So, yeah, and that's sort of, again, you know, we spoke about um, the uh, compaction variations sort of through through this region, and um, so that void is sort of associated with that. The, um, the other thing is to note that there's a glass uh, uh, the fiberglass layer in the where the seat uh, post would sit. So they're anticipating an a aluminium seat post, and so to reduce galvanic corrosion, they've used uh, some glass barrier ply in there. So, um, so well, that's pretty pretty well done. Nothing really further to note here. The um, 
the top tube and the C tube are uh, made as separate uh, separate pieces. So the C tube is part of the the bottom bracket uh, lug and the down tube uh, transition, and then the top tube is joined to it in uh, in, in this region here. So and and also at the upper region uh, of the triangle, and then. Uh, it's sort of moulded in and wrapped um, as a secondary step by the looks of things. Um, and then we have the insert for the uh, for the upper pivot, and again that's an aluminium insert. There is a little bit of bag wrinkling going on here, but that, that's very minor really. I'm not too concerned about that at all. Um, that all. All, all's pretty good. That insert is sort of is held captive, and um, so it, it it can't go anywhere. It's really it's really well uh, laminated in the um, and then again it's a bit of filler, uh, some sort of syntactic foam filler to to uh, to, to you know, meet the rest of the shape around the insert and uh, give that support. So all that's done pretty well. Um, I haven't come across on these the pivots coming loose. I have seen it on other uh, dual suspension bikes where the pivots over time uh, debond, um, but this one this one looks all pretty good. And then a closer look on the main lower pivot. Again, same sort of thing. The um, aluminium insert. Lots of material around it to support it, so it's uh, it's not going to go anywhere. And um, yeah, the only thing which could upset that is is corrosion over time. So here's the damage on the back of the C tube. Now I have seen this before when um, the uh, the pivot, like the you know the the rocker the rocker arm. Uh, impacts a frame and uh, I'm not sure what happened on, on this one but I I did see it one time where somebody strapped some spares to the back of their seat tube and um, and they, they strapped a, uh, a CO2 canister and then during riding and they it bottomed out and it impacted with the frame and caused quite a bit of damage so but I'm not sure what happened with this one in, in with the damage, but it's definitely definitely delaminated in that area. And here's a closer look. You can you can see the the impact damage, so all through through this region here where the pliers have separated. So yeah, the impact zone is sort of right about there, and you can see the paint missing. So you know that's quite a large delamination in that area there. And now we have a look at the seat stay. Now the the chain stay on the, on this was a, it was aluminium, but the seat stays are carbon. And when Dean sent the bike in, and he he said something might have been bent or something like that, where he the um, in this area through here you can see a line there and a line there, and he had a, an old inner tube taped over that entire area. Now when I removed that uh, that inner tube. I found that um, it's cracked through right here. So that's the damage that he um, what made the bike unrideable, basically. That whole section that has, has cracked right through. So let's have a bit more of a, a closer look into, uh, into this area of the bike. So as you can see, the damage goes all the way through um, in there. And... Uh, yeah, and you can also see all the sort of dirt in the bearings and things like that here. So yeah, it doesn't matter how hard you try and, and keep mud and grit out of mountain bikes, but dirt will always get into these spots. But uh, yeah, that break is all the way through the material. And um, yeah, that's what was causing, was making the bike uh, not handle so well. So we cut this open as well, and we can have a, a bit more of an overview on uh, on that actually looks pretty clean and um, yeah it's uh, yeah apart from, apart from the, uh, the the failure it's um, it's yeah, it's not too bad so let's have a closer look 
so this is where the failure is and um, so you can see right through here that's and there the um, the dropout itself is is a carbon molded piece which is bonded you can see the adhesive here um, also some voids corresponding voids and some adhesive porosity etc as well um, also you're getting a nice wrinkle here so quite a quite a big wrinkle so again with that uh, sort of associated porosity in that wrinkle you know you might get you might get a crack sort of coming up in that region there um, you know one of the things which is a little bit of a concern um, is just how steep the um, well the, how big that step is so you know you're going from this thickness here and then next down it goes quite thin and and it's not really a surprise that the failure occurred right at the point where it transitioned from thin material to thick material so yeah you know, that's sort of you know, it would have been nicer to have a more gradual thickness transition through that area but yeah I mean it's not really uh, meant to survive sort of impacts like that but it may have survived it though it had uh, had there been a, a more uniform transition up sort of near the the, the bridge and, and the, uh, the the rock of sort of pivot mount um, again that looks pretty clean it's um, you know I left all the remnants of the bag in there I haven't, I haven't pulled those out but the um, it, it all all pretty good I mean that was all left in there so that's just sort of as cut there is some sort of syntactic material through through here um, that's not really a good drawing um, but uh, I'll raise that there we go but um, yeah, a little bit of porosity but there's so much material there that's that's not an issue and then by the time the bearings are um, or the pivot is you know so there's a pivot bearing in the, in these regions here plenty of solid laminate through there to retain that a um, little bit of a kink in the in the in the laminate through there and and there but um, no that's 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 all pretty good and then on the uh, on the non-drive side you've got the disc brake mount and that's uh, that's bonded onto the, this large sort of square section stay um, and yeah that's that's done really well so you've got a lot of bond area so all through here and then on the top of the brake mounts as well so it ends up coming all the way up to about here somewhere and um, yeah there's there's no issues with that at all there's no signs of any corrosion or anything like that so that's all that's all, all really good too So that's the uh, that's the Specialized S Works Stump Jumper 2010 model. Um, for a 2010 model bike, it was built really well. Um, you know, you've seen other examples of older road frames that I put up, which aren't even as old as that, and they are an absolute mess inside with voids and wrinkles and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I mean, this had a few little things going on, um, but very minor compared. To some of the other things we've seen um, also because it's a mountain bike and the laminate is heavier it's um, yeah there's more margin margin for uh, you know, factor of safety margin for error um, in in the build so you know less likely the things are going to go wrong um, you know that, that front triangle I weighed it before I cut it and it was 1122 grams so you, compared to road frame that's sort of you know you get a complete frames uh, even 10 year old ones weighing less than a kilo um, so yeah it is it is built heavier um, the um, I, mean, I do get a lot of mountain bikes coming in um, mostly they're repaired that they're, they're not often scrapped so um, so I don't have the opportunity to cut up that many mountain bikes um, yeah, so that's just that's just how it is. So, thanks, Dean, for donating this one to us to um, to review. 
I hope you, um, you, you see this video and, then, and you can understand uh, why the bike, why you felt the bike was unrideable and the, and the back end was moving because uh, it was definitely, uh, you know, failed right through there. So that's, uh, uh, yeah, you definitely noticed that, uh, that failure. So, um, so thanks for that. The only other comment I, I, I'd make is they could, um, you know, put a drain hole in uh, in the bottom bracket just to uh, alleviate any moisture build up because that, you know that that definitely caused a little bit of a problem I think with the corrosion around the the bottom bracket where they've um, yeah and Specialized have had problems with their bottom brackets um, their press fit style bottom brackets and over the years particularly so um, anyway I hope you learned something and um, we'll see you soon for another review okay bye.